All right, so today I just have a uh, just another one of these uh, Silverado um, uh, instrument clusters on the workbench. Uh, I got some new equipment, but uh, that's not what this video is about. Uh, this video is going to be just covering some of the basics here. So I'm going to talk about how to uh, desolder with one of these. Uh, this one's really worn out, so it might give me some problems. You might see it stick a little in the video, but it's whatever. Um, basically, I, I know that the uh, average viewer watching this video probably does not have a desoldering station. Um, so I'm going to go over how you would probably be desoldering. This isn't how you see me do it in all my videos. Um, but let's just go over some of the basics here. So uh, with uh, with these, I, I still always like to use a little flux when I am using the hand pumps. Uh, I never use flux with my desoldering pump because it is a cheaper desoldering pump, and it it uh, the flux builds up in the pump and makes it stick. Uh, so yeah, you won't see me using flux with that, but you'll definitely see me use it with this. So I'm just gonna come in like ah. Uh, Gotta get all situated here one second. Alright, scoot that back a little bit. Alright, so just come in, heat up your solder, press the button, and it'll pull the solder right off. Um, so you notice you coming in and then keeping keeping the iron still on there and then just doing the pump. So what you won't notice me doing is some guys, what they'll do is they'll heat it and then they'll turn, come and suck it off. I don't like doing that because that uh, creates a lot more pressure and you tend to lift pads doing that on this particular board. That technique works really well with amplifiers when you're trying to get all the MOSFETs when the board's a lot thicker and you got to get a lot more of it off. But uh, just, you know, just this and then there you go. That's all there is. Pretty simple. Um, so you're not going to want to sit there burning on the trace for a really long period of time. You see, that came off nice and easy, no lifted pads, uh, no burnt traces or anything. Uh, one of the problems you'll run into is if you're using one of the kits that you order with the, the uh, soldering irons get way too hot and you'll just burn up the pads and they'll be gone. Um, so I would definitely recommend getting a better soldering iron than the ones that come in the kits that you would order on Amazon. They, you know, it comes with like seven stepper motors, a soldering iron, some solder, and like 20 different LEDs. Um, so stay away from those kits. They, they're more expensive than just buying the stepper motors that you need. And the soldering iron that comes in is just absolutely worthless. You're, you're not going to use that soldering iron. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody in the con that's going to comment down below, oh, it worked fine for me. But sure, it, it, it may work fine for you. Uh, but yeah, if you if, and if you are using a cheap soldering iron like that, plug it in, let it get hot enough, <laughs> unplug it so it doesn't get like insanely hot. Use it till it's not hot enough, then plug it back in. Uh, it's, it's the best way I can think of to use one of those really cheap ones. Um, but uh, you know, if you if if you're thinking you'll do more than just the one soldering job, I'd recommend one of these. Uh, one of these cheaper soldering stations right here. This this will get the job done for you just fine. Uh, and, and you'll continue. So now now I showed you how to do it with this, which I'm not going to continue to do it with this because I have the right tool for the job. So let me like, get that heating up. But um, uh, pretty simple to get off. Uh, when you're taking the bulbs off, all that you're going to want to do is get you uh, a nice pair of dikes like these um, these actually are cheap ones you can get off of uh, uh, AliExpress and stuff like that they're just a couple dollars uh, these are a, a nicer pair that uh, Hacko sells it came with uh, my Hacko 888 Delta um, but eh, either one will work but you can just do like that just cut them off the other thing these actually have pretty weak solder joints to them. You can just pull them off without ripping the traces. I don't recommend it. That's not the best way of doing it. But uh, it, you, you're better off pulling them off than trying to take a soldering iron and desolder them. If you're using one of the cheaper soldering stations, or not soldering stations, but the, the soldering iron that comes in the kit. Uh, I've seen it time and time again where I get ones from people that uh, ordered one of those kits and they just uh, ended up 
breaking uh, or burning off all the pads. But like I said, you can literally just pop them off without lifting the pad. They're, they're so crap. The, the, the solder joints are just so, such crap on there. They come right off without lifting the pads. So there's no excuse to be burning up these pads uh, with the soldering iron. Like if you're not comfortable desoldering, just just take the pair of dikes and cut them off. It's 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 the easiest way to get them off. You know, if you go with dikes, you know you don't have to you don't have to worry about that one off chance that you you know lifted a solder pad because you decided to just rip them off the board. I, I don't recommend ripping them off the board. I was just showing it that you can do that and it won't lift pads. But what will lift pads on these is if you take, you know, a soldering iron that's way too hot and just start uh, desoldering on there, uh, especially if you just don't know what you're doing. Um, and you might be someone that's familiar with desoldering, so you're, you're trying to take those lights off and you're using uh, solder braid to do it. Um, it's just, just unnecessary. You, you just don't have to do that. Um, something you can do if you want to if you if you're just trying to clean off all the old solder since you know that you're gonna get that good uh lead filled solder on there to take care of the job but yeah it's um if you have one of these desoldering tools like this it makes the job go a lot faster you know having the right tools for the job are just perfect but uh you know this uh, this is like a hundred and twenty dollars for this uh, setup right here so it's not too terribly expensive uh, but uh, it is more expensive than you'd want to pay if you're just doing this one time to just you know just fix your own board and you have no intent on doing more of these in the future so um, you know the uh, a hand desoldering pump will work just fine for the job if uh, that's what you uh, choose to go with. You, you definitely don't need one of these specialized tools like you'll see uh, me using, and uh, you'd see Jeff and some other YouTubers that work on these. We all we all use a solder pump like that because it just makes the job a lot easier. Um, and when you're doing five or six of these a day, you know your thumb will get tired from pressing down the uh, uh, solder pump. Uh, I think the most I've done in one day was six, and it was before I, that, that was the day I decided to buy my solder pump, as I decided six was just too many for uh, using a, a hand pump like that. I have seen a video where somebody was desoldering with solder braid to get them off. Uh, if you know what you're doing and you're comfortable with solder braid, uh, it'll work. Um, for that it's definitely something you can do but uh, that's not something I'd recommend for a beginner um, solder braid just it's it's a little harder to use it takes a little bit more time to get comfortable with um, it definitely works but it's just not how I'd recommend doing it okay so now we're in the second half of the video we're gonna be I'll just be showing you how to uh, put on the new x27 stepper motors um, so now that you've desoldered and taken off all of your stepper motors, uh, I've already replaced all the bulbs on this one with LEDs. That'll be a future video on uh, how to do the uh, bulbs. This one, I'm just going over the basics on how to do your stepper motors. Because at the end of the day, that's what most people are trying to fix. Um, it's always best to do any lighting work that you need to do if you need to replace any of the bulbs before you... Uh, put back on your stepper motors because this one can be really hard to get at and these two can be kind of difficult to get at with the stepper motors on so that's the order you're going to want to go in is take all your stepper motors off reflow all well, take all your stepper motors off take off all your your original lights reflow any areas that need work uh, put on all your leds or ome style bulbs the incandescents and then uh Put on your stepper motors this will be your last step when you're in here so um, with your stepper motor you're gonna take it it has uh, two holes on the back make sure your legs are straight and then you'll see the four holes for the legs you have one uh, elongated hole which is for this smaller leg and you'll have one round hole which is for this larger leg so you just line them right up and they go in with 
you just kind of pop in a little bit of pressure you won't have a ton of pressure this one has some glue on the back so i might run into a little more pressure if you have like a ac delco refurb or delphi refurb um they they put glue on the back of them so it can make them a little bit harder to pop in uh, if you if you have one of these that has a bunch of bent legs just straighten out the legs it'll work just fine uh, it won't give you any problems there you, to, you just pop all your stepper motors on and do that real quick and just go ahead and put them all on first no point in flipping back and forth on it because you don't have to worry about them falling off they they pop in with just a little bit of pressure there. And I see this one's got a bent leg. Just straighten it right out, and it'll work. I got that one backwards. Yeah, you don't have to worry about them going on uh, backwards because the with the two different size holes, you, you can't put them on backwards. So. I have heard, but I've never seen, that people try to just pop these on and then not solder them because they had such a hard time desoldering them. Definitely make sure, because even though they pop in a little pressure, they're not making good contact. you got to make sure to resolder them. So now that we've put them all on there, you can put a little flux on there if you need to. I find uh, with some decent solder and with these through-hole components, you really don't need any flux. Um, but it is something that... If you're using uh, cheap, uh, let me turn on my uh, oh, my fume extractor real quick. All right. If you're using really cheap solder, you will run into needing some flux on here. Uh, but uh, normally, I'm I'm only needing flux for the circus mounts with the solder. So, yeah, you're just applying a little heat and then come in with a little solder. That's all there is to it. Through hole components are really easy to solder. You really don't have to worry about cold solder joints nearly as much as long as you have a soldering iron that's up to temperature. And you don't move it around a whole bunch after you flow your solder on. Uh, nice and simple and just again so you're first gonna apply heat and then solder you don't want to sit on it forever and uh, definitely use your little two-hand technique there any solder balls like that just wipe them off you don't want to leave them to roll around in there and then ruin something later down the road I would recommend either a wedge tip or a bent tip like I'm using to do this. I would stay away from conical tips, uh, which is what's going to come with most of your cheaper solder irons. Uh, conical tips are really just not uh, that great for the suited for this kind of work. Um, I, I find conical tips pretty much useless, uh, you know. They'll work for putting two wires together, but there's still better tips for that, too. Um, and that is it. You've now replaced all of your stepper motors. That's all I'm really going to cover in this video. We're going to try to cover some more of the basics, you know, slow it down. I've been getting a little bit where I'm just rushing through these videos. So this one, slowing it down, going over the basics of how to replace your stepper motors. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, so that way you don't miss any future videos. Uh, my next video, who knows what I'll be doing, because I never plan this stuff out. <laughs> Let's be realistic. But yeah, I uh, hope to see you next time.